Kavali News today, Australia commits funds for Solomon Islands border management system. Construction of Naha Birthing Centre set to begin. Australia Solomon Islands Security Partnership discussed by officials. And Solwata Liyumi campaign empowers coastal communities. Hello and welcome. I'm Lisa Ossifello. Speaker of National Parliament, Patson Oti, is anticipating progress on the Constitution Amendment, Constituent Assembly Bill 2023. Now, the bill aims to establish a clear process for repealing the 1978 Constitution, outlining the formation of a Constituent Assembly, a coordinating committee and various theme committees, each with specific responsibilities. So one very important law now, that one, and this one was very important now for this one of parliament here, yeah. right? Um, the, according to schedule law, law last government, uh, this, this is the first meeting of the Constituent Assembly, supposed to be uh, by December this year. So preparation are going now. You will have heard that what a Constitution Reform Unit, law Prime Minister's Office, have visited the uh, uh, Western Province. Uh, and then I think to us all because those two did not go into the elections for this fellow uh, April, uh, sorry, April yeah. So they were, you know, intact. So what a go, Kasem, what finish. The other constitu the other provinces, I think they will go and you know, then try for take them go now. But now have inside law constituents assembly and the agenda for the adoption of the federal uh, system of government. Uh, it's a long-standing one. Uh, and it's an important one. So for me, for here, we're looking forward to how now by him deal with him, this, uh, this parliament him deal with him. The 50 members of parliament, including the speaker, what are now inside the body, what call them constituent assembly. So I'm trying to use or uh, portray this as one of the important agenda, for this all present government, the same, same one no more, it's our party, and continue by this all uh, present combination here. Yeah. Australia will allocate funds for the ongoing development of the new border management system in the country. Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister of Australia Richard Miles announced a contribution exceeding $18 million for the establishment of the new system BMS. This initiative is part of Immigration Division's reform and restructuring efforts aimed at enhancing service delivery. The new system will facilitate the streamlining of visa processing operations, offering more flexible visa products, thereby expectedly stimulating economic activity in international commerce and tourism sector. Other reforms include decentralising passport services to the provinces and implementing training programmes for staff. The BMS is a result of the Pacific Trilateral Partnership between Australia, Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands. Well, what, what the border management system will do is digitise the existing paper-based system, um, which is obviously expensive, uh, it takes time, it's cumbersome. Um, being able to have this digitised really gives the Solomon Islands government an ability to have power over its borders, a power over the policy making it has in respect of borders. Uh, the border management system will make it much easier to collect revenue, uh, it will be much easier to track who's entering and leaving the country, uh, but it will also make it much easier to introduce new visa classes, which gives uh, the Solomon Islands government a much greater power to put in place different kinds of visas, which in turn enables it to really have fundamental control over the policy of its border management. Yeah, I mean, this will be a watershed um, in the way in which Solomon Islands manages its borders. And it is a trilateral program. Uh, it, it's us working closely with Solomon Islands, but also with Papua New Guinea, with whom Solomon Islands obviously shares a very significant maritime border. Um, this is a trilateral pro project between our three countries, which is a great example of the cooperation of uh, three countries which are very close, but three countries which are really family. The construction of the Naha Birthing and Urban Health Centre will officially commence following a visit by Australia's Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister Richard Miles. Australia announced the provision of this health facility in 2018 
on the occasion of the country's 40th independence anniversary. Despite challenges in its construction since then, Health Minister Dr. Paul Bosowai, speaking during the Mao's visit, hailed him as an angel bringing good tidings for the commencement of the facility construction. The establishment of this birthing center will commence construction in July 2024 and will be the first for the country and will enable the high quality birthing services provided to our new mothers and their babies in the modern, safe environment outside of the National Referral Hospital. This bathing center will have capacity of up, up to 1,500 low-risk deliveries per year, and this will greatly assist with reducing the workload on the NRH's delivery word and the NRH's overworked midwifery staff. So the midwifery should tap their shoulders and say to the Australian government, thank you too much. Once completed, the centre will offer first-class birthing, pre- and postnatal care services for women, as well as eye, dental, pathology, x-ray, ultrasound and pharmacy services. Australia's Deputy Prime Minister Richard Miles has discussed the security partnership between Australia and Solomon Islands with Prime Minister Manelli. Miles highlighted Australia's provision of training and advice to the Solomon Islands Police, emphasising their significant contribution to the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force. Uh, well, Prime Minister Malali and I spoke about uh, the security partnership that we've had in the past and how we want to make sure that this forms part of the relationship that we have going forward. The police, that have, the Australian police that have been here providing training and advice to Solomon Islands have been uh, making a really significant contribution to the RSIPF. Um, Prime Minister Malali made that clear in, in his comments to me about how greatly they are valued. And we're certainly committed to looking at ways in which we can uh, make sure that that ongoing presence is here. We're very open to that. Uh, right now, uh, Prime Minister Malali made clear to me that the Solomon Islands government is going through a security review. We obviously uh, will watch that with great interest and we await the outcome of that. And that will, I think, inform both governments in terms of the exact form uh, that the presence of police, Australian police here have. Um, in their ongoing work in providing training and advice to uh, the RSIPF. Nine individuals who went missing at sea in Timotu province have been found safe and sound at Malo in South Malaita on Saturday, May 18th. They had set out from Utupua to Vanikoro Island on May 8th but failed to reach their destination. The group consisted of six adult males, two adult women and a six-year-old boy. According to Deputy Commissioner of Operations, Ms. Janita Matanga, the banana boat they were on was loaded with local food and other materials for the journey. However, they veered off course and were carried by strong sea currents until they reached South Malaita after 11 days adrift. The Royal Solomon Islands Police Force extends gratitude to the people of South Malaita, particularly Melanesia Brother Household of Abalolo and Malo for providing assistance to the individuals before placing them in the care of authorities. Supported by international NGO Sea Change, the Solwata Blotumi campaign has played a crucial role in educating coastal communities on resource management. Recently, Information Toolkit was launched to support the work of fisheries officers. The Solwata Blotumi Information Toolkit aims to provide provincial fisheries officers and relevant NGOs with resources to facilitate communication on community-based resource management. Currently, 80 information toolkits are being prepared for distribution to communities. The toolkit set arrived in the country. Uh, last week, we go releasing from customs and transporting the law. Uh, Ministry of Fisheries. So every 80 fala toolkits, I mean 80 fala boxes, yeah, container booklets, yeah, 
law minister of fisheries in this time and it's ready to be distributed in, around the country the provinces in the coming months and yeah uh you may say that stakalo community is blaming you not accessing uh like television or internet and also staka population limi at uh garam like certain education level tertinggi no not that um advanced so it's a booklet tembara simple break them down at the concepts into simple steps that people must follow uh for managing not not just for speed tembara easy to follow like garam pictures inside and pictures and like text I'm simply even small beginning, but so for the most popular area of the community blue, just help out for make them community blue aware about it and help for make them distribute to the community and make sure the community follow the guide.